Thanks, April. Um, and good morning, everyone. Oh, I missed it. I'm. Yeah. I've actually expanded the presentation a bit. It's we're going to talk about the GARC education platform, but in the context of methods and tools to deliver the information, education, and communication component of the stepwise approach towards rabies elimination. I know that's a very long title. Um, we'll be do learning more about the stepwise approach or the SER later from Andre. But just very briefly, oh. For anyone who doesn't know, the stepwise approach is a set of specific activities and it's a self-assessment and practical guide that can help countries get from one stage of rabies prevention in their country right up to elimination. Now, all of these are measurable steps. And within these stages, we have activities. The activities are divided into categories. Among those categories are the information, education, and communication activities. I'm going to call them the IEC from now on. Um, I was very happy to see yesterday that a lot of countries in their posters have included IEC activities. It's evident that this is an essential part of any rabies elimination program, but we've discovered with our work with other countries in the stepwise approach is that it's also one of the most neglected areas, and not many countries are doing this category strategically and comprehensively. So our tools should help to um, address this gap. In the IEC section, uh, category in the SARE, there are three sections, public awareness, professional training, and advocacy. And some of the tools that we have are the GARC education platform, the blueprint, World Rabies Day, and End Rabies Now. I'm going to be covering three of them today, and Andre will cover the blueprint later. So the GARC education platform is a set of free online courses and they're open to everyone, some of them, and some of them are for particular professions. Every course has an online assessment, and only by successfully completing this can a graduate get a certificate of achievement. We have certificates for all of our courses. Right now, we've got three courses. The Rabies Educator Certificate, which is available in English, French, and Spanish. The Animal Handling and Vaccination Certificate, which is available in English and French, and the Community Coordinator for Rabies Certificate, available in English. We're soon going to have the Rabies Healthcare Certificate, and I'll speak a little bit about that as well. So the Rabies Educator Certificate is for anyone who not, who not only wants to prevent rabies, but also wants to teach others in their community how to prevent rabies. It has a set of modules, and among these modules, I'd like to point out, we have one on responsible pet ownership, and we also have one on communicating with people. And this is very important, and we think it's interesting for rabies professionals, because this is not usually something that's taught, but it is an essential skill in spreading the message. So globally, we've got over 4,000 REC graduates, and you'll see from the spread across the world that this is not a course that is country or region specific. This is a course that can be used anywhere in the world. 2% of the graduates are from the Mireb network, um, and Lebanon is actually leading the field here with um, 42 graduates. The Animal Handling and Vaccination Certificate is for anyone who is involved in dog handling and routine vaccination of dogs. It exists to help promote the safety and well-being of the dog, the animal handler, and the vaccinator. We've got over 500 AVC graduates, out of which we have 3% from MIREB. So the red lines show health professionals registered on the OIE database. And as you can see, there aren't many AVC graduates. So for example, when you're thinking about who this course would benefit, this could be a potential target group that could benefit from the AVC. The Community, community Coordinator for Rabies Certificate, or the CCC, builds on the skills that have been learned in the Rabies Educator Certificate. 
and it helps individuals to become a focal point in their community for rabies prevention. So they can cover dog bite exposure, they cover mass vaccination <coughs> campaigns, and we'll see here that actually they act as a liaison between animal health professionals and human health professionals and the community. So it, the course helps them to build relationships with community leaders, the veterinary sector, the human health sector, and it also teaches them specific roles for mass dog vaccination events and also what to do in case of bite exposures. Now, we want to be clear, this role is not meant to replace animal and human health professionals. This, this role is meant to support them. So this is one of our newest courses. So right now, we've just got 100, under 150 graduates and 5% from Mareb. So the GARC education platform has been integrated into, into different programs. Uh, just a couple of, well, a few examples. The picture on the top left is REC graduates in Cambodia. Uh, they did this as part of an FAO CDC uh, training program there, and then they went on to train others. On the right, we have graduates from the Ethiopian government who did the REC and AVC. They, it was made a prerequisite in order to be part of the mass vaccination campaign that they had to do these courses, because it means that you then have professionals who have at least a certain basic standard of knowledge and skills. And this is last year's workshop by the Institute Pasteur in Iran, where delegates had to complete the REC as a prerequisite for joining the course. So the GARC education platform is also integrated into veterinary schools. In this case, it's the REC, which was integrated into the University of Pretoria's veterinary faculty and also the University of Philippines Los Banos College of Veterinary Medicine in their community engagement and civil service training. And a comment from one of the deans said that the students became very confident not only in handling dogs and cats, but also in talking to pet owners. And these, we'll agree, are very important and transferable skills. Occasionally, we see some incredibly direct action uh, impact in communities. Um, this was not something planned, but when we were doing a course in Haiti with the CDC and other partners, one participant said, well, he was looking at the symptoms being taught, and he said, well, that's what happened to a child in our village. And then there was a ministry investigation, and they found another five people in that village who had been bitten, and they all had, they were all vaccinated. And this wouldn't have happened without the training. Usually what happens more in the community is that people are trained, and it's like a train the trainers, and they go out and teach others how to prevent rabies. So in the Philippines, there are members of the Rabies Speakers Bureau who conduct seminars in the community about rabies and they all have to be certified with the REC. Just a word about animal handling and vaccination certificate. If you're training new people, the online course must be accompanied by offline training by professionals, because here you're handling dogs and you know, safety and well-being of the dog and the handler are important. So we have a GAR consultant, Daniel Stewart, above um, training in Lesotho and in Ethiopia. And the AVC has been integrated into many mass vaccination campaigns. Here we have veterinary, a veterinary students association which made it part of their annual field medicine training. And then they conducted a mass vaccination campaign in the city. And here we have an organization called Veterinarians for Animal Welfare Zimbabwe. And they have a set of animal welfare inspectors who run mass vaccination campaigns in rural areas and all of their inspectors are certified with the REC and with the AVC. So we can, although our courses are online, we can consider on a case-by-case -case basis if governments request it, offline training, and also if they have the funds available, of course. So the latest, uh, latest um, part of our GARC education platform, which is very exciting, is aimed at human healthcare professionals. And I think it might address some of the questions that came up yesterday, because it covers administration of biologicals, it covers lab investigation, it covers clinical diagnosis, and it also includes the latest WHO guidelines as presented yesterday by Dr. Knopf. So moving on to World Rabies Day now. 
So everyone, I hope, knows World Rabies Day is September 28th. It's a day of action and awareness for rabies and rabies prevention. Thousands of events are held across the world, from schools to governments, and it's a United Nations Day of Observance. In 2017, we had 229 events registered on the GARC website, out of which 1.8% were from MIREB countries. I'm hoping this changes this year. And World Rabies Day is, is an integral part of the rabies calendar. It's in the global framework for the elimination of dog-mediated rabies by 2030 under the socio-cultural pillar. There we are. And a lot of international organizations use World Rabies Day to announce major initiatives. Here we have the United Against Rabies Collaboration, which is the WHO, OIE, FAO, and GARC, which announced the Global Strategic Plan for Zero by 30 um, on World Rabies Day. And in fact, the theme for 2017 was Rabies Zero by 30 to support this initiative. And it was also decided by the collaboration. Occasionally, regional networks also use World Rabies Day for their own needs. Um, the ASEAN countries have World Rabies Day in their strategy. And in 2015, they did a call to action. So very quickly, some country examples. So the Philippines adapted the zero by 2030 um, theme last year to zero by 2020, because ASEAN countries have the goal of eliminating rabies by 2020. Namibia and Kenya both launched their national rabies elimination strategies on World Rabies Day. In Tunisia, the municipality of Tunis, the OIE, and the Ministry of Agriculture launched a new vet vaccination center on World Rabies Day. They also held a workshop to plan a rabies control strategy. The Kenyan Zoonotic Disease Unit did a 10 kilometer run against rabies. And thanks to Dr. Convey for, for sending me this, in Cameroon, the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, with the support of Boringer Ingelheim, actually educated 300,000 children and vaccinated almost 50,000 dogs for World Rabies Day. So that's pretty huge. In the Philippines, again, the government uses it to, to declare rabies-free zones. So it's a really big day, and, and it can be adapted to your, to, to your needs and used to increase awareness for many different things. And as I've said, there's a major media focus around World Rabies Day. These are just some of the articles that exist. Um, you'll find hundreds more. So for 2018, I mentioned some of these yesterday, but just to recap, the theme this year is Share the Message, Save a Life. You can use this theme in so many ways for public awareness, to talk to your governments, or, or to um, increase professional training. You know, it, it can be adapted in many ways. And we can provide you with these banners and different variations in your own language. And we can also provide the World Rabies Day logo in different languages. It may already exist in your language, but if not, please contact me. When events are registered, we also have modifiable posters this year. You can add your own photo, you can add your logo, you can change, translate this text and download a poster. So that's a new thing for this. Well, it's a, it's a new poster for this year. We also have for the third year, the World Rabies Day Awards, which we run in conjunction with MSD Animal Health. And these awards are a great opportunity to nominate a rabies champion from your country. These could be, this could be an individual or an organization, <laughs> and um, we'll be launching those in the next couple of months. And finally, you can go on the website and register an event. It's very easy to register an event, and if you have any problems, you can always contact me. Everyone who registers an event automatically gets their own web page on the GARC website, and this can be shared with others. So this is just the web page for the workshop from the Insta Institute Pasteur, which actually registered their event. Just a summary, um, which we've already covered. These are the different ways in which World Rabies Day can help. I'm not going to go through this slide. So moving to end rabies now. This is a campaign that was set up to increase awareness of rabies as a global neglected disease, also to support local advocacy efforts, and also to show the world what progress is being made by different countries towards rabies elimination. And 
Campaign partners on the NRABES Now campaign are all the major organizations, um, international organizations in rabies control. So the NRABES Now campaign offers a number of things. We have stories <coughs> that come from different countries and different organizations talking about progress. And we promote these stories on the website and through our social media. It's a good way of showing what new initiatives are happening in your country. And we encourage you to approach us with stories. We also have a number of downloadable resources, including the lovely graph that Terence presented yesterday, which you may not remember, but it had all the current spending by region. Um, we also have position statements on culling. We have videos. And we're going to add more resources as time goes on. And it's also a good way of reaching other organizations in your country and outside. We have over 100 organizations that have signed up to support the campaign, and we're hoping more will join. So what is it we would like you all to do next? First of all, please enroll in the courses. It will help you to see how you can best use them for your country and if they need to be adapted for your needs. The USB drive you have has the flyers so uh, of all of these things, so you can use those. Please hold a World Rabies Day event. I know all of you already hold them, but do share it with us so that we can share it with a wider audience. And of course, the banners are all in English on your USB drive. Um, as I said, we can do them in different languages. Please send us your stories of progress to share via the End Rabies Now campaign. And all our new initiatives and resources are all our new initiatives and resources are shared with everyone through our newsletter. So you can sign up through this link. Or again, just contact us and we'll do it for you. And you can contact us for customizable resources. Your USB drive also has a selection of the GARC awareness resources. We can work with you to translate those into different languages. So um, please do get in touch. Um, that's our address, and I can also give you my card. Um, thank you very much for listening. So.